What's up everybody? It's me, Crosspatch. I am back at the Pittsburgh Steelers practice facility once again. And the subject of today's video is Best Money Plays in the Pittsburgh Steelers Playbook Part 2. I did a video a few months back about five passing plays in the Steelers Playbook. Five of the best plays not only for getting uh, deep shots and one-play touchdowns, but also for completing passes consistently, moving the ball downfield, avoiding throwing those interceptions, and winning football games, even on all Madden level. And I will put a link to that in the description. And this is going to be part two to that, the second installment. And I'm going to have five more plays here that meet those criteria. You'll be able to take some deep shots, but most importantly, they are consistent plays you can rely on to move the football. So uh, before I get into that, I want to talk just quickly about post-snap and pre-snap reads. Um, and most people know what those are, but you know, just to briefly define them, uh, a pre-snap read is when you take a look at the defense, when you come up to the line, and you're going to make an educated guess on what you think that they're going to do. So what kind of zone they're going to be in, are they going to blitz, are they in man-to-man? -man? Um, a post-snap read is after the ball snapped, the play is in motion, we're going to decide what to do with the football based on how that play is unfolding. So the reason I bring this up is because I think it is too easy to try to make those pre-snap reads and at that point make a decision on what you're going to do with the football and then get um, unpleasantly surprised once the play starts unfolding. So Pre-snap reads give you a hint of what might happen, but the post-snap read is where you need to make your decisions. And that's what we're going to concentrate on with these plays here. We're going to look at the assignment for every player running his routes. We're going to talk about the progression of who you're going to throw to, who you're going to look to, what order to look to them in, uh, what to look for in the defense as far as deciding where to throw the ball. And uh, let's get started. Uh, before we do, if you uh, find this video entertaining, educational, or enjoyable, please go ahead and hit the like button. Maybe subscribe to the channel. I don't want to tell you what to do. You know how YouTube works. Most importantly, I hope you find this helpful. And the first play that we're going to look at oops, is uh, Empty Bunch Verticals. So this is a play that uh, obviously is in the Steelers playbook but you can also find it in Seattle and Washington's playbook. And we are going to go just random play for the defense. And I'm going to snap the ball. I'm going to let Ben get snapped, sacked, snacked. If he's hungry, he can get snacked. Otherwise, he's going to get sacked. And then we're going to take a look uh, at what everybody's doing here. So we've got your outside guy here, Smith Schuster in this case. He is going to run a go route. Slot guy here is going to run like this little glitchy uh, like slant, like slightly deeper slant. See how it has that little hitch to it? I don't know who he's trying to fake out, but we're going to actually uh, alter that route, uh, which I'll get into in a minute here. Because I don't like that I don't like that little glitch to it there, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, over here, we've got two players running wheel routes. We've got this halfback, number 26, and we've got Claypool, the outside receiver. Both of them are going to run these like tandem wheel routes, kind of. And then we have our tight end in the slot here. He's running like this lazy, rounded post kind of route. So, our first look on this play is going to be to this uh, this outside receiver running this wheel route. And what we need to look for is who's over the top of him here. Like in this case, we've got the corner is kind of lined up on him, off the ball quite a bit. And we've got the safety back here. So who's going to cover him? So we can see right here the the, the safe the uh, corner is uh, coming right up to cover him. So he's obviously not open. But what happens sometimes 
is this corner, whether he's lined up there or out here or wherever he is, will either bail out or blitz. And somebody else has to pick him up then. So what you can do is if you see a window there between that corner getting out of there, like you would throw it right around here. Uh, if you see a window between when that corner gets out of there and when whoever is coming to pick him up gets to him, you can fit the ball in there and get a nice gain right off the snap. So, you know, ideally you're, he's going to be able to turn that corner and get a big gain and outrun some people. But, you know, at the very least you're going to get like an 8 or 10 yard gain. Like, easy peasy right off the snap. It's almost like a bonus to this play. Like, and, and this happens a lot of times with these wheel routes. Um, the one thing I'll say is you've got to be careful. Because it really is a split second read that you have to be spot on with. Because if you're not, like say this corner bailed out and uh, this linebacker was coming over. Um, depending on how quickly he got there, or even this safety coming up uh, to cover him. Depending on how quickly they get there, you could be wrong and you can end up throwing an interception the other way. So, you know, always kind of just be sure of this. Give it like that beat, that one little second that, you know, you can see clearly he's wide open. Get him the ball quickly and you have a nice little game. But that only happens sometimes. Like I said, that's kind of a bonus to this play. The, who we really want is this guy, the tight end. We want to get him the ball on this, uh, this post route he's running. So you can see he's open. He's the guy we're throwing to here. He's going to have a nice gain here. We get him the ball right around here. Like after he clears these linebackers, right there, he's wide open. He's the guy we want. But if he was not, and, and what we're going to see in a lot of these uh, plays is we're going to count on linebackers to tell us where to throw the ball. So in this case, these linebackers went over this way. Um, looks like one of them's trying to pick up uh, the halfback man-to-man. -man. This other guy's in like a short zone here. Um, because they did that, our tight end is wide open. But what if they didn't? What if they had faded back? What if they had went with the tight end? And we're going to run... We're going to run this play live a little bit, and we'll probably see that happening. Then we want to throw to this guy. But what I'm going to do with him... See, like I, like I said, I don't like that little weird route he's running. I'm going to hot route him to run a drag. Because I want him to get underneath these linebackers if they're going to drop back. Right? So if these linebackers take the tight end, like they're going to have to choose. They either take the tight end or they don't. And if they do, like in this case they don't, but if they did... Then I want to have that guy running the drag wide open right under here. And again, that's probably not going to go for a touchdown, but it's a completion that we can get 8 or 10 yards out of. Um, you know, at the very least, we get we move the ball. We get a, avoid a sack. Now the other option here is uh, this guy running the streak, running the 9 route. And we can see what happens here. And this is one of those things that I'll say, it's, it's kind of up to you. And I would advise, make your decision based on who this wide receiver is and who this cornerback is. So, like, in this case, I know who both these guys are, obviously, because this is my franchise. Uh, I know that they are equally matched as, as far as speed goes. So, if this corner steps up or stays in his place, right... Now this, over here, this corner has, uh, I'm sorry, this safety. This corner has no help over the top. So we've got a man-to-man -man situation over here, a one-on-one. -on -one. Do you want to throw that ball? I mean, that's up to you. If I have a 95-speed wide receiver and an 89-speed uh, corner, I'm throwing this ball. That's a touchdown. But that is, uh, you know, taking a little bit of chances. That's uh, putting the ball up. Especially in a case like this where you had a, you had a sure, probably 20-yard gain here. So, you know, these are decisions to make. So let's run this live a few times and uh, see what we get. And, uh, and notice I'm, I'm on the left hash mark here. I like to run this from the left hash mark 
to give that uh to give that wheel route a little space. So let's see what we got. Wheel route's no good. We're gonna go underneath. See how deep he goes there. I didn't hot route him, and see how deep he went, and that ended up as an interception. So that's why I hot route him to that drag. See that? So he's not falling back into these safeties and linebackers. So let's take a look at it again. See, now he's more shallow. He can cut that up. And we got like nine yards out of that or something. So you want to hot route that guy to run a drag. There's our tight end, maybe. Broken up. So again, just like on the other side where you're going to make decisions based on who your corner, who that corner is and who your uh, wide receiver is, when you see your, your tight end here matched up on a linebacker or a safety, you know, you can make that decision. Do you think you can get it into him? And there's that wheel route. So there's Claypool for a nice gain. Again, we hot route. There's our tight end. We'll run it once more and move on. And there's that wheel route that's going to get taken away. So I didn't wait long enough on that one. I threw that a little too quickly. There's our tight end. Yikes. Alright, so you get the idea. Um, you got a lot of opportunities on this play for big plays. Um, but also, you know, you've got that guy running the, the drag route underneath. Um, and there's our tight end again. So let's move on to the next play. We're going to go... Trio. Eventually. Here we go. Trio. And Trio is a, a formation that's only in the Steelers playbook. But, you know, think about the concepts we're doing here. Like, this is a Mills concept. We've got a guy running a deep dig and a guy running a, a post. And uh, that's what's going to possibly get a big play open for us here. So, again, we're going to let Ben get sacked here. And we're going to go over what everybody's doing. So, we've got uh, our outside receiver here. He's running like a deep out. Or a deep uh, hook, kind of. We've got uh, Smith Schuster who's going to run this post route. Johnson's running like a deep dig. And that's the mills, right? The, the dig with the uh it doesn't really work super great on this play but um no that's the idea is you've got a post route with a dig and hopefully your this dig is going to draw a safety down and leave that post open that's the hope it sort of works out like that and sort of doesn't so this uh tight end is going to run a, a corner route And our halfback is going to run like a wheel route here. So our first look on this, is we want to get the home run ball. And uh, sometimes you get it, usually you don't. But we're going to look at this safety, because we want to throw it over him. So what we're hoping for is like man coverage, like a match kind of coverage, something like that, where this safety is going to be concerned about this dig and we're going to be a throw be able to throw it over his head for a touchdown on this post route obviously none of that happens on this play right the safety bails out and we've got a linebacker uh down the middle here our next look is going to be to this tight end running the uh the corner round you can see that's not open either right so they've got that covered as well. 
our third look and then what we would have thrown in this case is just getting it out to this halfback. He's kind of our outlet when neither of these things are open. Because these are both of these are kind of um both of these deep routes are kind of low odds kind of throws. And uh you know, in order to make them, we need the situation to be right for us. So it's good to have this outlet guy. Just get it out to him, uh, you know, if the play doesn't work out how we want it to. So let's run this live a couple of times. We'll see how it goes. So again, we're looking at a very flat defense here. I'm feeling a little optimistic that I can get this out to Smith-Schuster. And I think I'm going to take a chance on doing this, that this ball is snapped. Unless I see these safeties, like, bail out immediately. And we had a we had a blitz, but we got it to him anyway. So once again, oh, Smith Schuster's got his X factor going. All right. So once again, we're gonna look at these safeties. Um, not too optimistic that we'll get the ball to Smith Schuster. So we're probably gonna be looking to our second option here. And that is our corner guy. And that wasn't great. And you kind of have to choose between floating it to him or uh, just zipping it out there. I usually zip it out there because when I float it, we seem to run out of field. He's not open there. That corner fell back. So we're going to go, and we're going to happily take an 11-yard gain there and be happy about it. Or 6-yard gain, whatever we got. There's our tight end and that can go for a big gain as well that could end up being a touchdown though depending on whether or not he can turn that corner and again who your tight end is there he is again so you've got three options on this play two of them have the potential for home run to you know be a home run ball um Probably could have got it to the tight end on that one. So there's play number two. And again, that's only in the Steelers playbook. Uh, trio, Steelers, dig. But, you know, look at the concept. Look at that Mills concept And uh, if you're not using the Steelers playbook. And, uh, you know, see if you can find another play that works similarly. All right, the third play we're going to look at is one of my favorites in the playbook here. It's super simple. And uh, I run it um, probably more often than I should. We're going to go empty stealer verticals. Now, I know empty stealer is only in the Steelers playbook, obviously. But this is a concept you could use with most vertical plays. So, like, you can take this to, you know, whatever formation, a verticals uh, play call where you've got everybody going deep. And uh, kind of do the same thing that I'm about to do here. So we're going to go random play again. We're going to let Ben get sacked. And we're going to see what happens. So, like, there's not much to talk about with what everybody's doing here. Everybody's going deep. It's verticals, right? Um, you know, we'll just look at it quick. Everybody going deep. Smith Schuster, however, is running kind of a, a little bit of a skinny post. And uh, he's going to be the guy we want to hit here. This tight end is running this little hook route. We're not going to let him do that. We're going to hot route him to run a drag once again. So let's run this play live a few times. Um, to kind of get a feel out of how it's going to work for us. So we're hot routing the tight end to run the drag, right? And once again, I'm going to look at this linebacker in the middle of the field. See him there, 54? And he is going to tell us where to throw the football. If he goes with Smith-Schuster, we're throwing it underneath. If he, st if he uh, blitzes or, you know, fades to the side or something like that, we're going to have Smith-Schuster wide open. And that actually was a bad throw. That was a bad throw. Ignore that one. Let's try it again. So the safety went with him. We're going to go underneath. Yeah, every now and then you hit the button weird. 
So again, we're looking at that linebacker. We're going to decide, uh, based on what he does, what we're going to do with the football. And then he kind of went, he kind of went to the side there to try to pick up that other the halfback, I guess. So we had Smith Schuster wide open down the middle, and again, this can this can break for a big play sometimes. They're going with him. We're gonna wait till he clears. He's wide open, and we get a nice gain. So the other thing to think about with this play is uh, once again, if I hadn't I haven't said it already, everybody's going deep. So you can kind of look and see, like right now I see Claypool and Johnson uh, with a couple of cornerbacks in their faces. Now Claypool is 93 speed, and he's tall. And depending on who that corner was, I might be thinking about challenging him. The problem is there's two safeties over the top there, though. So they would have to like uh, roll to like a high safety or something for me to throw that. But it's something else to think about. Like, that's another option on this play as well. So you don't only have to go to Smith-Schuster or Peterson, or Peterson, or, or your tight end. Your tight end won't be Peterson, because he's a meta-generated player in my franchise. But whoever your tight end is... And there's Smith-Schuster again. So a super simple play that you can use... If you don't choose to use uh, this actual formation, you know, any vertical kind of thing you can do this with. Um, and, you know, it's going to work. You know, nine times out of ten, this play works uh, for at least an eight or nine or ten yard game, if not a bigger one. Or if not a touchdown with these guys on the outside. So let's move on. Let's go to our next play here. We're going to go... Tight doubles, flood drive. Okay, now this is in the Steelers playbook, obviously. It's also in the Raiders and Lions playbook. We're going to call random play for the defense here. And let Ben get sacked. Ben's 40 years old in this franchise, and I'm letting him get sacked on purpose. That's horrible. All right, so let's take a look at what these guys are doing. We've got the drag again. If you haven't noticed, I really like these drags. Um, they give you an outlet that's not just like a little, you know, check down to a running back or something where I'm going to get the ball in, in a receiver's hands and he can potentially turn a little catch into a big play. So I really like these underneath routes. You know, you learn to throw those instead of taking shots downfield when you're not sure. You can avoid throwing a lot of interceptions. Um, always have a second option. So he's running the drag. We like that. This tight end is running a deep crosser. Smith Schuster's running the corner route. And Claypool's running a go route. And our halfback over here is the only one on this play going in the other direction. And we're going to hot route him to block because there's no point in that. I'm going to, I'm looking, I, and this is a play where if you have a faster quarterback, you may want to run this like a sprint out. I might actually try to do that to see if I can show you what it looks like. It's not so great with Roethlisberger. Um, he's not a super athletic quarterback anymore. But if you have a faster guy and you want to run a sprint out with this guy, you know, get him out here to make this throw. We'll try to do that once or twice here when we go live. So let's go to the live. Oh, no, wait. Let's not go to the live look. Let's talk about your, uh, your, uh, your looks here. So the first guy we want, this is going to be a two, two, two options here on this play only. I guess three if you count Claypool going on the, on the go route. We want Smith Schuster on the corner. That's who we want on this play. Not open, obviously. The uh, corner drops back. And, uh, you know, Claypool's running this, this go route, so he's going to clear the safety out. But the corner drops back and covers that, so we're not going to have him. 
But the good thing is that that means, because you know, like I said before, when somebody clears out to cover, <clears throat> excuse me, a deeper receiver, that opens up this drag route. And look how wide open he is. So he could. This is where we would have went with the ball here. And again, depending on how this defense lines up, depending on how much confidence you have in your receivers, uh, maybe throw this to Claypool. I probably wouldn't. I probably would need to see something a little more um, obvious that he would be open before I'd throw that. But r let's run this live a few times. Let's see what we get. Hopefully I don't throw an interception trying to sneak this into that corner route. But let's give it a try. So we're going to hot route our halfback to block. Because there's no reason for him to run. I mean, I, I guess. I don't know. I don't. In my opinion, there's no reason for him to run that uh, that wheel route going the other way. And so we're going to look at what see what we can do and get Smith Schuster open here. And there he is. And that could potentially... He had a mismatch on the linebacker. That's a big play, potentially a touchdown. I also like to run this play kind of near the goal line, like around the 20-yard line or so. Um, it seems to work out good uh, in that in that uh, that area of the field. And I'm going to go underneath there because I didn't like how that corner drifted back, or the the safety I guess it was who drifted back. Here we go! Here we go! Black twenty. So this is a choice, you know. You're going to choose between trying to get that corner out, or. Uh, We've got another mismatch here. Oh, he overthrew him. Yeah, the choice between trying to throw the corner out or, uh, you know, if everybody clears out, you've got that wide open, wide open throw underneath. So that's tight doubles, flood drive. Super simple. Again, actually, I said I was going to run a sprint out here. So let's see. A little scary with TJ Watt there. So the first thing, and I don't do this a lot anymore. I used to do this in previous versions of Madden a lot. We're going to slant our offensive line right. We're going to... No, we can't. I was going to say we're going to bring that half back over, but we can't. We're going to have him block. And then we're going to let Roethlisberger get outside the pocket here. And that kind of worked. The thing is, he's going to be exhausted now. So uh, I don't do this anymore. I used to do this a lot in older versions of Madden. Get Roethlisberger outside the pocket and uh, try to get, you know, shake guys open downfield for him. Um, but uh, the risk is not really worth it, in my opinion. But, you know, when you're running these sprint outs, you kind of divide the field in half. You're looking at the, uh, you know, the side where you're rolling. And uh, if you didn't have Roethlisberger, if you had a, a quarterback who could run, you know, you've got the threat of turning it upfield. And I think, oh, that's not bad. So it works a little bit. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think, like I said, the risk is worth it. But that is one of those plays where it's kind of, uh, if you want to try running a little sprint out with him, give it a shot. And we're going to go to our last play of the day here. Trio, tight end in. Oops. Trio, tight end. And this is a little wonky. This is a probably the glitchiest play. I wasn't sure if I wanted to include that in this. Uh, but, you know, we'll take a look at it because it is, it is kind of um, potentially good for a cheap touchdown. And I'll be honest, this is a play that I'm not sure I should call. I feel a little, I feel wrong calling this play sometimes. I feel like I'm taking advantage of the game. Because here's what we're going to do. We're going to motion this, guy's out, this guy out here, McFarland, right? And you see how the linebacker went with him? See how he goes with him? Sometimes, they just completely ignore him. He's out by, there by himself with nobody covering him. But even without that happening, there's still some good things about this play, right? So, we're going to let it run. Ben gets sacked. For the last time today. And we're going to take a look at the instant replay. 
So out here, we've got a play pool running this little uh, hook. We've got Smith Schuster running a go route, so that's something to think about on this play as well. We've got Johnson running, you guessed it, a drag. Our favorite drag. We've got uh, the tight end running. This is who we want if we can get him. We want him right around here. This would have been open. And we have... This uh, running back is supposed to run like a wheel route. When I motion him out, he still kind of does. But uh, we're going to talk about this. So let's get into this live uh, practice here. So, this is interesting, what I'm seeing here. I'm going to motion McFarland out. I'm going to hot route him to run a go route. Because I think I would take a shot at throwing to Smith-Schuster on this. I'm going to see what that safety does. Uh, that safety way, way back there. And uh, this, may be a, this may be a deep shot here. Let's see. Let's take a chance and see how that goes. Yeah, so the safety came over. So those are the risks you take when you throw these kind of deep balls. And I maybe should have been a little more aware of the safety. Anyway, that was a little bit of a sidetrack kind of thing. So see what I'm saying here? McFarlane goes out there, and they're not really covering him. Now, I could run him on like a hitch and just get it out to him. Um, but, you know, we'll see what these safeties do if they ignore him. Yeah, so we're just going to get that out to Johnson. And the blitz coming. And now they're in a prevent defense for some reason. I guess this is what happens when you call random uh, defenses. So there's our tight end. And I like to put it low to him when I throw him on this dig route. Uh, because uh, he's kind of, even though he's open, he's kind of running right into... Some other, some other stuff that's going on. So there he is. So this is a play you can kind of experiment with a little bit. Uh, it's a little new to me. I've just still been kind of working on it. Like I said, when he goes out here and they don't cover him, I'm not sure what to make of that. Um, you know, I throw it if they leave him wide open. But, uh, I don't know. It's kind of glitchy. And there's our tight end wide open because the linebacker blitzed. So it's another one of those plays where we're going to let that linebacker tell us where to throw the ball. Uh, it's easy to get distracted by uh, McFarland here. And see, they're not covering him. So what should we do? We put him on a streak. We'll see what that safety does. Safety ignores him. I mean, I don't know. Glitchy? Cheesy? Don't call it? I don't know. But it's there. It's just something I wanted to show you as far as, like, um, you know, plays that you can use a little bit to exploit some of these coverages, some of these blown coverages. There's our tight end. And that's about it. So those are our five plays, five more money plays that you can use. Um... You know, to kind of not just get those deep shots, but also, um, you know, consistently move the ball downfield. I hope you enjoyed this. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please go hit that like button. As I try to not cough to death here. Most importantly, I hope you uh, have a great day, and I will see you next practice.